everybody. Hope you're all doing well. So today we're going to be looking at another monologue from Julius Caesar. As always, that monologue is in the description below, so take a moment to pause me, read it, and then come on back. So, the last monologue we looked at in Julius Caesar was the speech Mark Antony gives at Caesar's funeral, and the speech we're looking at today is inextricably linked to that one, because this is Brutus's speech before Caesar's body is brought in front of the masses. Basically, this is Brutus giving Mark Antony all the ammunition he needs for his speech that we've already looked at. And I would highly recommend you take a look at that video again after we finish this one, because you'll notice so many similarities between both speeches, and I'll go over some of them as we talk today. So here's the thing. Brutus comes in, and he is one of the, trust, one of the most trusted of the public figures involved in this assassination. And he comes in, and he's like, okay, people, listen up. Myself and some others, we've killed Caesar. We've done so for this reason, this reason, and this reason. Does anybody have any objections? And because Brutus is A, a very trusted, notable public figure, and B, he delivers a speech that is very to the point and explains everything very well, the townsfolk all go, yep, no, we don't got a problem. You are fine, Brutus. Go right ahead on with your day. And then Brutus makes the mistake and leaves and lets Mark Antony talk, and Mark Antony undoes everything Brutus just did. So... Let's take a look at then what Brutus says in this. So, first of all, he uses that Roman's countryman line that Antony steals in about, oh, 30 seconds. And he talks about how, you know, he has his honor, which they all know. He also, you know, is like, look, I want you to listen to this. I want you that if, I want you to listen carefully. I'm not trying to rile you up. I'm not trying to change your mind. I just want you to listen and make your own judgment. And he goes on to explain that he did love Caesar. And he thought Caesar was a great man, that he was valiant. He was fortunate. He was a joyful person. And it was all good. But because of Caesar's ambition, he had to die. And that is what is important about Brutus' speech, is he, he doesn't make Caesar appear to be a bad guy. He says Caesar has a lot of very good qualities, but unfortunately there was the one quality, the ambition, that is the reason that he needs to go. And he lays all this out for the people and lets them be the judge. He doesn't try to sway them one way or the other. He's already done the, the deed. He cannot unstab Caesar. It... It wouldn't work. It doesn't work that way. So all he can do is present the facts, and he does so, and the people are like, "No, we that that makes a lot of sense, Brutus. We have no qualms with you," which is really amazing when you stop and look at what Antony has to do a couple minutes later to rile them up. Antony goes full emotion. Antony goes full. My best friend is now dead. You all saw that he did this and this. And he was a great fellow, and why are we not angry that he's dead? Whereas Brutus is just like, he's dead. This is why. Let's go. So I think it's a very interesting contrast that you can play as an actor, is the, the higher in intensity Mark Antony goes, the more calm and collected Brutus has to be to make him seem the more stoic and the less passionate. Because I think from a perspective of the public speaking thing, that the guy who's got all that passion is the person the audience is going to listen to more to and follow along with because they see that he's getting passionate. He's getting very excited, very big energy. And we have a tendency as a human, as the human race, to kind of follow that. So when we look at this monologue as an actor, what I'm looking at here is, again, there's a sadness to it because he did just kill somebody that he very much loved and respected. But there's kind of a finality to it. Again, as I said, he knows he can't undo what has been done. All he can do is plead his case and let the jury decide. So here he goes. Be patient till the last, Romans, countrymen, and lovers. 
Hear me for my cause and be silent that you may hear. Believe me for mine honor and have respect to mine honor that you may believe. Censure me in your wisdom and awake your senses that you may the better judge. If there be any in this assembly, any dear friend of Caesar's, to him I say that Brutus's love to Caesar was no less than his. If then that friend demand why Brutus rose against Caesar, this is my answer. Not that I loved Caesar less, but that I loved Rome more. Had you rather Caesar were living and die all slaves than that Caesar were dead to live all free men? As Caesar loved me, I weep for him. As he was fortunate, I rejoice at it. As he was valiant, I honor him. But as he was ambitious, I slew him. There is tears for his love, joy for his fortune, honor for his valor, and death for his ambition. Who is here so base that would be a bondman? If any, speak, for him have I offended. Who is here so rude that would not be a Roman? If any, speak, for him have I offended. Who is here so vile that will not love his country? If any, speak, for him have I offended. I pause for a reply. And such is Brutus. And Brutus, sure, is an honorable man, to quote Mark Antony. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye!